Hi, let's talk about Nixit Locks, or more specifically, how you might go about designing and building your own Nixit Lock from scratch. Uh, first, I'd like to take you through the design of my first clock uh, that I ever built. Uh, this was more than a decade ago. Uh, when I was finished with this clock, I was really proud of how it turned out. But uh, in retrospect, I think it's more an example of how you shouldn't design and construct an XC clock. Still, uh, it's probably representative of typical early maker projects. So it might be good fun to take a look inside and see how it works. Um, I'll also like to talk about uh, my latest clock design, uh, where I'm using uh, Raspberry Pi Zero as the controller. Uh, I made three different variations of this board. One is specifically tailored for the IN1 tubes, uh, one is uh, specifically tailored for the IN12 tubes, uh, and I made a more generic version, uh, which you can hook up to almost any Nixie tube you want. Uh, and I even made a kit for it. Uh, not because I have any commercial intentions uh, with this clock, but because it's a fun exercise to make a kit. Uh, and it's even more fun to build something from a kit that you have made. Uh, so if you're interested in designing your own clock or want to know how Nixie clocks work, uh, I will take you through uh, the various components and explain what they are and how you put them together uh, in order to build a Nixie clock from scratch. Before I started making the electronics for my first Nixie clock, I had to figure out how I was going to make the enclosure for it. Uh, and this was way back in 2008-2009, and I didn't have access to stuff like laser cutters or a 3, 3D printer or a CNC machine. Uh, the only option available to me was either to fabricate something by hand or doing a cast, and then preferably in a non-toxic material. Uh, I was pretty inspired by Ron Arad's famous concrete stereo system back then, so I decided to attempt to make a concrete shell for my clock. And this is the mold box. And to make this, I first made a clay mock-up of the enclosure and then assembled uh, this mold box around the mock-up. Uh, I didn't really know much about mold making or how to cast complex shapes back then, so instead of using clay to build up a multi-part mold that I could easily take apart later, I just poured silicone over the mock-up and hoped for the best, uh, which in hindsight probably wasn't the optimal solution to this problem. Uh, I hadn't given any thought on how I was going to extract the cast concrete from the mold either, so I had to cut into the silicone and just attempt to pry it open. And this was really hard since the inner part now was a solid block of really, really hard silicone. But I managed to end up with a couple of decent casts, so uh, let's look at the clock. And this is what I ended up with. I'm using IN1 uh, Nixie tubes for displaying the hours and minutes and I'm using an OG4 Decatron tube running on 450 volts uh, for displaying the seconds. Uh, it's actually a decayed counter but it's uh, doing one step per second. Uh, the controller inside is an 8-bit AVR microcontroller and this directly controls four K1.5 ID1 BCD decoders, which in turn are connected directly to the Nixie cathode pins. A uh, 190-volt power supply drives the Nixie anode through a current-limiting resistor. And the decotron is controlled by three high-voltage MOSFETs. Uh, and the UART on the AVR is hooked up to a Bluetooth modem and this enables you to set the correct time via another Bluetooth device without risking <coughs> electrocution <laughs> by touching the electronics. Uh, and I'll come back to why this was a concern for me at the time. And the clock still works after all these years, uh, but I have forgotten the protocol for setting the time and the code for the firmware is most likely residing on a hard drive on a laptop that has been recycled at least a couple of times by now. Anyways, uh, I was pretty happy with the results at the time. I took a lot of pictures and I also did a write-up for my blog. And a friend of mine tipped off the editors at the Make Magazine blog and it actually got a the mention there. And for me this was a huge thing, uh, almost like winning the Maker Olympics or something. Um, However, I might have forgotten to post any pictures of the clock internals and uh, 
after looking at the next clip, you'll probably understand why. Okay, I've disconnected the power, so it should be safe to inspect the internals of the clock, I hope. So let's remove the base and take a look inside. Uh, by the way, if you're accustomed to more professional electronics, I suggest you maybe look away now. So this is the inside. Uh, this is the first PCB that I ever made for driving Nixie tubes. On board we have an 8-bit AVR chip, a regulator and a programming header for the SDK 500 uh, kit. I used this to program my homebrew boards at the time. Uh, and it never occurred to me that I was basically reinventing the Arduino but with less features each time I designed a new board like this. But the upside was that I got really familiar with the SDK 500, the Atmel Studio and the uh, low-level architecture of the AVR. And to the right we have the Bluetooth UART bridge. To the left we have uh, a 450 volt power supply which is safely insulated from everything else with the help of a plastic bag. <laughs> uh, and the bag is of a type uh, which I know now is actually conductive to some degree. Well, let's move on. Uh, we're using IDC cables for connecting the cathodes. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the voltage rating on these are, but since it hasn't actually caught fire, I guess it's okay. Uh, there is hot glue everywhere inside the clock. I uh, can also see a lot of electrical tape and also duct tape. Uh, and <laughs> since you really don't want to solder wires to the pins of the Nixie tubes, you want to use sockets instead. Uh, and I remember that I desperately tried to get hold of sockets for the IN1 tubes, but uh, it was impossible to, to get hold of any. So the cheapest way I know of connecting wires to these tubes is by using Molex scrimp terminals. Uh, I wasn't aware of this at the time, so I'm actually using Milmax pin sockets instead. Uh, you can see them down there. Uh, and these are really expensive. They cost something like a dollar uh, per piece. So <laughs> the collection of pin sockets alone is probably the most expensive part of the whole clock. Uh, now, uh, the way this clock is put together makes it a fire hazard. The whole high voltage supply can deliver a few milliamps, but it will still bite you if you touch the terminals. And even if it doesn't electrocute you directly, the shock from touching such a high voltage terminal can be really dangerous. So uh, it looks like a complete train wreck, but it works, kind of, and it was a really, really good learning experience for me. So, let's open it up. So inside we have assembly instructions. We have a 12 volt power supply for driving the clock. Various resistors, some wiring, Raspberry Pi, headers, Raspberry Pi, Nixie tube BCD decoders, a transistor array, some shift registers, sockets for the integrated circuits, an SD card to hold the firmware, some uh, mounting hardware, a high voltage power supply. And this is especially nice since we can drive it with uh, 12 volt power and get 3.3 volt, 5 volt and high voltage for the Nixie tubes out. We also have a nice PCB. And we have uh, 7 Nixie tubes in total, 6 for the clock and 1 spare. These pins are for uh, uh, mounting the Nixie tubes to the PCB without having to use solder. And we also have some nice laser cut acrylic parts for the enclosure.
the schematics for this clock in detail. Uh, and maybe also throw in a few programming examples as well. I have referred to this build as uh, an Ixi clock, but it's basically just a six digit generic display. And that means it can be used for other stuff as well. And especially since it's an internet connected device, we could potentially convert it to many other things, such as maybe a meeting cost calculator, a metrics display, uh, or maybe an event timer. So I'm not making any promises uh, at this point, but uh, we'll see. So thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.